Hallelujah. For the past weeks, we've been talking about the placement of sons of God. The placement of sons of God. As being placed or as coming to the place where God sees us as his sons or calls us his sons. Now let us go very quick to the book of Ephesians chapter number 1 verses number 3. Pick up from where we left last time. I want you to pay very I want you to pay attention and listen to what is coming to you very carefully and this is what is going to change your life and open your mind to know how to live your life, how to live the way God had always wanted you to live before you came on this earth. Praise God. Ephesians chapter number 1 verses number 3. It says, Blessed is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing and heavenly in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us acceptable in the beloved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, what we understood from last time was that the word used here, adoption, okay, where it says having predestined us to adoption as sons, okay, the word in Greek has to do with the placing as a son or someone coming to the place as a son. I give an example that when uh, your parents gave birth to you, initially you were a little baby, okay? They used to call you their baby, your baby. And then eventually you grew up to the place where they will call you their child. And then after you came to the place where they would call you their son or their daughter. So you have been brought to the place of a son or a daughter. You're now a mature person. You're an adult. Okay? And you're not just a son because of your physical age, but because of the way you process things in your mind, because of how you reason, because of how responsible you are, because of, of your character that has been developed, because now you're able to take care of responsibilities take care of the business your father or mother are able to take care of so when they are not there you're able to be in charge if let's say your mother is not there you can take care of your siblings if your mother and father are not there you can take care of the business if your dad was to travel travel he can entrust you with his car and the car keys if let's say your mother has a store or your dad has a business he can send you into another province or city and tell you to start the same business there. Why? Because you've been trained to know the ways of your father or mother. And now you understand how to also uh, go about his business. And you can start another business in a different place. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is why sometimes um, some managers or super, uh, bosses of some companies... They will send one of the employees, okay, to another place to start another business, a store. That is similar to the store where they used to be. But before the boss can send the employee there, it is because they've been trained, they've understood the ways of, of that business, and they know the ways of the boss. The boss um, trusts them and can trust them with uh, his resources and knows that this person is trustworthy. And has come to the place of understanding, the place of knowledge, where they can carry out responsibility. You see, they are faithful, they are committed, they are devoted. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So that is what we are talking about, being placed or coming to the place of a son of God. This is what the Bible says, that we are predestined to the placing, or to the placement as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, 
according to the pleasure of his will, to the praise of his of the glory of his grace, by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Now, this teaching that is coming to you, you might ask yourself, what is the relevance of it right now to my life? Because uh, right now I need a husband, I need a wife, or right now I need healing, I need deliverance, right now I need money, I need a direction concerning uh, my school, I need to know where to go, what to do. You might be asking yourself these kind of questions. Maybe you're praying for certain things, you have not received them, and you're asking yourself, what is the relevance? Why, why should I know uh, this? Well, uh, because there, there is a place where you can pray to God for God to give you things, okay? That is the baby. That is why I was talking about the baby stage, the child stage, and also to the place where you are an adult, you're grown up, you're a son, your daughter, God can call you a son. He no longer sees you as a baby. See, so it is a baby that will always depend on the parents to feed them. To feed them. A baby always, when a baby is hungry, okay, the baby that cannot go and get food for themselves. They cry. They are not even, they are not even able to articulate in the English language or whatever their native language is. See, so when you are born anew or when someone is born anew, they drink milk. And they cannot uh, tell mommy or daddy, mommy, I need food. Mommy, I, I want this or I want that. They just cry. So the parents detect uh, their needs. Okay, the parents know their needs. Now, one thing you have to understand, God wants us to come or get out of the place where we are always crying out to him to do things for us. God doesn't want you to cry to him. There are many believers that cry to God. Whenever they are going through difficulties, they are going through hardships, whenever they are, they are in need of something, they will just cry to God, Oh, oh God, why am I going through this? <laughs> How come it is me? Oh, God, why am I facing all these trials? What have I done? Why me? Oh, God, you see that? You see, so that's not what God wants. God doesn't want you to keep crying. That is a, a cry baby. Now, many believers are crybabies. Unfortunately, many are babies. They keep crying every single time to God. But your father doesn't want you to keep crying to him. But when you're a baby, he understands that you're a baby. And he understands why you're crying to him. So the offense he will give to you as a baby. You understand that? He will give you offense as a baby. Though you might not know the words to use. You might not know the right ways to pray. You might not know the right words to use to make declarations and to make decrees. You might not know what to bind on earth for it to be bound in heaven. You might not know what to lose on earth for it to be loosed in heaven. So you're crying out to God for God to come and heal you. You always call a man and woman of God for them to come and lay hands on you. God understands when you're a baby. But after many years of being a Christian, you see, he expects you to grow up from that stage. And certain things you've been crying for, you wouldn't give them anymore. Even if you cry all your life. This is why there are many believers that remain sick and they die sick. Many believers remain broke and they die broke. Many believers are oppressed and they die oppressed. You, you go to heaven all right, but you will not have liberty on the earth. Hallelujah. So this is why a lot of times even after uh, laying hands on people and they get healed, and they get delivered, and whatever their needs are, they receive it. After a while, the enemy will come back, and if they are not filled with the word of God, they have not understood how to walk in freedom. They have not understood how to walk in liberty. They have not understood how to grow up. The devil comes back again, and their condition is worse than the previous condition. This is what is happening to many believers, many Christians. And they don't understand what is going on with them. You see, so... We are not trying to bring you the fruits of things. See, so this program is designed and destined to bring you to a place where you now grow up and you know how to take your business and you're getting to the place of sonship, the place where God always destined for us to be. The Bible says in the verses 6, to the praise of the glory of His grace 
by which he made us acceptable and the beloved. You see, and so when, when we are walking as sons, God is receiving praises. He's being glorified. That's what, that's what the fullness of his grace was given to us for. Not for us to just be church members. Not for us just to be uh, church goers. See that? So it is the Father's good pleasure and his good will for you to get to a place where you are a son just like a little baby grows up to the stage where they are now an adult. They are grown up and when they are hungry, they don't cry to mommy or to daddy for anything. When they need mommy and daddy's car because mommy and daddy trust them, they can now go take mommy or daddy's car and go wherever they need to go with the car. They can go into the fridge anytime they want, get food from it. When they go outside, there is no curfew for them. They can come back home at any time they want. They have keys to the house, so they go in and out. But a little baby cannot go in and out of the house anytime they want. They are always indoors. They cannot deal with things outdoors. They cannot even work. But of course, the baby grows to the state where they are a child. Even when the parents see them as children, still they cannot work. They are, they are not at a stage where, where they can work. The parents can send them to do uh, one, you know, some things once a while. See that. But they cannot really go out there and work and take care of business. They cannot even work to get money. The parents once in a while will say, okay, go, go wash the dishes. Do this and do that. But when it comes to dealing with things or affairs outside, the, the mother cannot send them and say, go to the bank and go get money from me. Go in my bank account, go withdraw a thousand dollars from me because they are not at the stage for that. Praise God. It is the same thing the Bible says that God predestined us to the placement of the adoption of sons by Jesus Christ to himself. So God's will was not just for you to be born again. God's pleasure, God doesn't take, um, God's pleasure is not fully manifested in you just being a, 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 a little baby or a little child. God's pleasure is not fully manifested in just you being a church goer, a church member. You always going to church. You always crying to him to ask him for things. That is not where he, t he delights. He d does not delight in that. He gets happy when you're born again. But that is the beginning of the journey into sonship. You see, so it's not even for you to just become a pastor, an apostle, bishop, prophet, evangelist. That is on the earth because in heaven, you are not going to function as a pastor, as a prophet, as an evangelist, or bishop, or a teacher. You are going to function as a son. Praise the Lord forevermore. Your eternal destiny is that of a son of God, rulers. Praise God. So what God delights in is when you come to the place of sonship. When you grow up, when you are praying to God, God, I want to come to the place as a son. Bring, put me on the path or set me on a path where I can be trained to become a son of God. God set me on a path. Put me on that path. It's not a joke. When you pray those prayers and God starts to set you on those paths, that is the path where you, He will start to teach you things by faith and He will, he will scrutinize you. Where you will learn to not to always ask Him for things, but to make declarations and decrees. Where you will go through times and trials, times of persecutions and hardships but many of you are just seeking to um, become good pastors and good prophets and bishops evangelists and all that okay that is good to 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 be a fivefold minister but in your fivefold ministry you have to understand that that is just the beginning you're supposed to become a son the fivefold ministry is just the beginning and if you want to re remain a fivefold minister, you cannot come to fullness of God's grace. This is why there are even pastors that are always sick. Pastors that are always complaining to God. Pastors that are always begging God for things. There are pastors 
that die sick. And some people say, ah, I thought he was a pastor. How come the pastor died sick? So because a pastor died sick, now we start to judge everybody by, by the standards of a man of God. But you don't know the stage of that man of God. It doesn't matter the, the amount of demons that were cast out. You don't know the extent of the stage. You see that? And babies or children in the Lord can, 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 can cast out demons, can heal the sick. Why? Because the disciples, they were not even born again. They did not have the Holy Spirit living inside of them. And they were healing the sick and casting out demons. So when, when I'm talking about a son or becoming sons of God, I'm not talking about us having the gifts of the Spirit. It's beyond that. Because gifts of the Spirit, it's a baby can have gifts of the Spirit. When you read the book of 1 Corinthians very carefully, you would get to know and understand that even the church of Corinth, Paul called them babes but still had all the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit operating there. This is why a man of God or a pastor, a woman of God, a prophet, an apostle, bishop, evangelist, teacher, can be a little child and the Lord, can be a baby. They will lay hands on you and heal you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, pray for your needs to be met. And the next day they are in their bedrooms crying out to God because of trials and persecutions and difficulties they are going through. See, today they say something and tomorrow they come and preach something else. Or they are preaching something and then you see their character as co completely different to that of Christ. So being a, a, being a preacher doesn't mean that you, are son, you, you have come to the place of sonship. Positionally, we are all sons. But when it comes to our walk, we have not all come to the place of sonship. It is a process. It is a journey. So God allowing you to be a fivefold minister doesn't mean that you're at a place of sonship. Because the disciples, Jesus called them babes, though they were still apostles. And they were able to cast out demons, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. Imagine the kind of miracles they did in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yet none of them was born again. None of the disciples was born again. So I don't know why people get so excited because they see a man of God healing the sick or casting out demons. This is not a big deal, friends, because those who are not born again could do it. Even there were times where the Bible says John came to see Jesus and John told Jesus, uh, master or teacher, we saw people casting out demons in your name and they, they do not walk with us, so we forbade them. We told them to stop casting out demons. And Jesus said, listen, whoever is not against us is for us. So don't stop anybody from using my name to cast out demons. This means at that time, Jesus was not even concerned about who uses his name to cast out demons or heal the sick, as long as the work is being done. It is being done. You see that. This means that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the disciples did a lot of works that we have not even done half of it today. And they were not born again. And none of them had the Holy Spirit living inside of them. Imagine Jesus said, When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall receive power to be my witnesses. So that kind of dynamis power, that dynamite power, that was flowing from your spirit like rivers. They had not yet received it. They just knew the authority in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and used it. And yet they were successful. So sons of God is not somebody who cast out demons, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers. We are all supposed to do that as children of the living God. <laughs> as children, we are supposed to be able to do these things. Every child of God, these signs and wonders should follow them. But when we're talking about sonship, it's beyond the gifts of the Spirit. It's beyond just casting out demons, healing the sick, raising the dead. It's beyond being a pastor. It's beyond being an apostle. It's beyond being a prophet and a teacher and evangelist. It's beyond that. That's not what we're talking about. It comes with, the you see, just as the office of a prophet, of a teacher, evangelist, apostle, comes with your own gifts and different manifestations of the Spirit. 
the same way sons of God comes with the with the uh, how do you call it? with with its own manifestations of the spirit. So that office is above all the other offices. It comes with it, with its own manifestations. It's the highest office we must get to. We must get to. We must get to. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, precious Lord Jesus. This is what we are predestined to become. Now, I shared last time that when the Lord Jesus Christ was baptized in the Jordan River, the Bible says the Father spoke from heaven. The Holy Spirit, first of all, came upon him like a dove. And the Father spoke from heaven and he said, This is my darling son in whom I am well pleased. Remember, uh, when we read in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, verses 5, it says, Having predestined us to the place and our sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. You see? So, becoming sons is according to the good pleasure of the Father's will. This is why when Jesus Christ was baptized in the water, when the Father said, this is my beloved son, there was the pleasure of the Father also manifested. In whom I am what? Well pleased. Why? Because it is the pleasure of the Father for humanity, human beings to become sons. So when we come to the place of sonship, the Father's pleasure is manifested and the Father himself confirms or the Father himself honors us and testifies of us to the public. Prior to that, Jesus was not confirmed. You see, the Father never spoke publicly to anybody that thus is my son in whom I am well pleased. How come? It is not recorded anywhere in scripture where the Father spoke to Jesus prior to that that this, that this is my son. As I said last time, when the wise man went to look for Jesus, the Bible says they were looking for the, 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 the newborn baby, the baby wrapped in swaddling cloths. See? And also it got to a state, the Bible called them the child. But then when he got to the place where he had matured from baby state, infancy, he had matured and he became a full grown man, a son of God. The Bible says the father said, you are my son. This is my beloved son. This is the one I can call son. This is the one who has fully matured and grown up to the place humanity are supposed to get. The place man, Adam, was supposed to get. This last Adam, this last man has arrived. He has reached that stage. He has reached that place. So at that time, it was the placement as a son of God. So Jesus Christ was placed. He came to the place as a son of God. As a last Adam, he was made the son of God. Praise God. He was the word made flesh. But when he was made flesh, he had to grow up in all things. This is why you see sometimes in the book of Luke, the beginning is age, the child Jesus waxed strong in spirit. He became strong in spirit. Bible says he also grew in wisdom. And the grace of God was upon him. So Jesus was not just a son of God because uh, he was made flesh. No, when he was made flesh, he had to grow up and come to the place as a son. Where the father can say, you are my son. Prior to that, the father could not say that. Though all along, the father was speaking to the son, teaching the son many things, and revealing many things to Jesus, he was not yet attested to. Or he was not yet fully mature and he had not come to the place as a son of God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. So he started his ministry as a son of God. Contrary to us, we start our ministries maybe as a pastor, apostle, prophet, bishop, and evangelist, teacher, and all that. Or we start our ministries when we are babies in Christ. So the disciples started their ministries as babies, not when they were sons. Isn't that isn't wonderful? 
They were not even yet mature sons, but yet Jesus could give them authority in his name to go cast out demons. Wow, this is awesome. Why? Because when the Lord Jesus Christ started the ministry as a son, everything that Jesus Christ was doing and teaching all, all the knowledge, the understanding, the revelations the Father had given to the Lord Jesus Christ was, was growing up, he could now confer it or impart it to his disciples. And your growth will be quick and very fast. So without even them getting to the place of sons, sons or maturing, them still being babes, yet the Lord Jesus expected that they should do the same things that they saw him doing. This is why Jesus rebuked them when they could not cast out demons. Now, you that has been born again for the past 10 years and you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, you're always praying in tongues and still crying to God. You think God will just hear your prayers because you cry? You think because you're crying to God to heal you so you receive healing? You're crying to God for finances so you get it? You're crying to God for marriage so you'll get it? <laughs> no. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Just as Jesus rebuked the disciples for their unbelief and lack of faith and not exercising faith like him the same way he rebukes us today through the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit, Jesus said that he's another, another advocate just like himself. So the Holy Spirit stands in the seat of Jesus and rebukes you if you don't want to grow. He had he had a high standard for the disciples who are not born again, who did not have the Holy Spirit inside of them. So if you are born again today and you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, the standard or the requirements are even higher. Are even higher. This is why you must work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Because it's working in you. The disciples do not have that. But you have it. You can grow faster than they. Wow. Great same works we can do. And even greater works we can do. Because he's, he's gone to the Father. And he has sent us the Holy Spirit. To dwell inside of us. Hallelujah. Now let's go to the book of Isaiah. Thank you precious Lord Jesus. I hope you're being blessed. We are going to take care of of business as sons, sons of the living God. We are rising up on the horizon. Yes, Isaiah chapter number 9, verses 6, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of the government and peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it and establish it with judgments and justice from that time forward, even forever, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Before we go into it, the Holy Spirit want us to read the scripture very quick in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter number, wow, chapter number five. Verses 43. It says, You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor as you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. Observe the verses number 45. That you may be wow, sons of your father in heaven. For he makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Do you see that? The Lord says, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. And the verses 45 says, that you may be sons, sons. Now, what is the Greek word, heos, which we have the word in Ephesians 1, 5, 1, it says adoption, is the same root word, heothesia. It says that you may be sons. In other words, 
you will be called, you will be seen as a son of God. Now children, or the babes, they have difficulty loving their enemies. They have difficulties blessing those who curse them. They have difficulties doing good to those who hate them. They have difficulties praying for those who spitefully use them and persecute them. They have difficulties doing that. The babes in Christ. When someone does evil to them, they want to also do evil. When someone says something evil to them, they want to say the same thing. Because someone said something evil, they feel compelled to also say the same thing. To repeat the same thing. You see, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. Because someone uh, did something bad to them, they choose to also pay back. But such are babes in Christ. They backbite, they speak against each other. Paul spoke about them in 1 Corinthians. See that. But those who are really mature and get into the place of sons, the other ones that can love the enemies, bless those who curse them, do good to those who hate them, and pray for those who spitefully use them and persecute them. And it says if you do that, Definitely, you're getting to the place where you're now a son of God. So sons of God are required to walk in perfect love. Sons of God are required to do things like the Father. So that you may be sons of your Father. So which means that when people see your life or by the love, or the love by which you walk by, okay, people can truly say that, you are of God. When they see the character of the love that is flowing through, how you're loving people, how you're treating your enemies, they can truly testify that you are of God, you're a son of God. Why? Because they will see that your character is, is of God. And they will say that, yes, you are the son of your Father in heaven. And Jesus will testify of that, and God will start to relate to you or bring you deeper into the things of the Spirit as a son of the living God. Now verses 48, it says, Therefore you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is what? Perfect. Perfect. So the place of sonship is not the place of, as I said, preaching and healing the sick as now demons. It first of all has to do with character. It has to do with character. It deals with character. So if we truly want to get to that place of sonship, then we must allow the Lord to mold our character. We must allow Him to mold our character. He has to mold our character as sons of the living God. Our character must be molded. That is a place we'll go through a lot of difficulties, a lot of tough times. When people will just hate you for nothing, speak against you for nothing. Why all that? So that we'll get to the place of sonship. That is a place where God wants us to get. So if you start praying, God, bring me to that place of sonship, He will bring you there. But remember that you have to be scrutinized. You will go through hardship, tough times where people will just speak against you, hate you. Do evil against you. Family members, friends, people in ministry will forsake you. They will speak evil against you. They will reject you. They will deny you. Why? Because the love of God in you must be perfected. It must come to the place of perfection. Your character must be perfected just like the Father's character. Where you have been made perfect in love. That's what 1 John talks about. Being made perfect in love. Wow. Do you want to get to that place? Why? Because remember the Bible says love is the great greatest. Love is the greatest. So if we are not being made perfect in love. God cannot entrust many things into our hands. Because our character has to be like that of the Father. That is when we are sons. We can truly handle things the way He handles things. 
You can treat people the way he treats people. So when the father sees that your character or the love has been perfected in you and you'll become love just as he's love, now he knows you can treat people like he treats people and you do what, you, what you've seen him doing. Because of that, he's not... God can now give you the fullness of the power of the kingdom because he knows that you will not use that power to curse people. He knows you will not use that power on your flesh for selfish things. You will not use it for the lust of the flesh. Now let's go back very quick to Isaiah chapter number 9 verses number 6. Now, when we read, the Bible says, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. So we understood last time that the child or the baby Jesus, the child Jesus, was not given to the world. God could not give the government, his government, his empire, the fullness of his power, his dominion, to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Father could not do that. The Father could not do that. The Father could not give the empire to the Lord Jesus. It was not possible. It wasn't possible for the Father to do that. But when the child grew up and became a son, that is when the Father gave him all things. Put all things under his feet, under his charge. The kingdom was now upon the shoulders of the Lord Jesus. You see, the Father has fully yielded the responsibilities of the kingdom to Jesus. Now the Lord Jesus Christ, he's the, he's the acting King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He is acting now in the stead of the Father. He's making major decisions. Why? Because the Father has placed a kingdom upon his shoulder when he came as a man. And it grew up to the place of a son because he had matured. The father now put the responsibility of his empire upon his shoulder. Where all the power and all the angelic beings, all the resources of the kingdom were given to the Lord Jesus Christ. Meaning that at any time of the day, Jesus could access all the resources in the heavenly realms. He could access the provision of the kingdom of heaven and bring them on the earth at any time of the day. Why? Because of the government was placed upon his shoulder. The father gave him his wealth. The father gave him access to all of his wealth and all of his power. He gave him access to all the angelic beings. This is why Jesus could multiply bread. He could increase the fishes, turn the water into wine. These are the powers of the kingdom. The governmental powers the Father gave to him. He could bring heaven, all the things of heaven on the earth. He could lose things on the earth and be loosed in heaven. The government was placed upon his shoulder. Because he was responsible. He grew up and the Father's love was made perfect in him. He became perfect even as the Father was perfect. This is why he told us to also become perfect as even as the Father is perfect. Because when you get to that place of perfection, he can also entrust you with governmental issues. Kingdom affairs. The empire, the responsibilities will be given to you to expand the kingdom. He said, of the increase of the government and peace, there will be no end. Wow, this is so wonderful. You understand why Jesus never had to pray to God for provision? The Lord Jesus Christ never had to pray to the Father to come and heal anybody. He never had to pray to the Father to come and do anything for him on the earth. In raising the dead or healing the sick class and the lepers. He never had to pray to the Father to help him walk on the water. Why? Because the government was upon his shoulder 
meaning that all the resources, everything in the government, all that the Father has, He gave it to the Son. Because first of all, the Father's character had developed and grown to the place and become like the, fa like the Father. So the Son was like the Father. The Son's image had become perfected like the image of His Father. So whenever you see the Father, you can see the Son. This means that the Son cannot act like the Father. Just as the Father would act if He was to be on the earth, the same way the, father, the Son would act if He's on the earth. Do you understand that? Whatever the Father would do to the enemy, to the devil, the Son will do the same thing to the devil when He sees Him on the earth. If the Father was on the earth, and will heal every sick, the Son also will heal every sick if He's on the earth. That is how it is. That is how it is. Why? Because Jesus had matured and grown up to the place where He knew the ways of the Father. He knew the character of the Father. He knew the thoughts of the Father. He knew exactly what the Father's will was concerning evil, concerning darkness, concerning poverty, concerning uh, sickness, concerning disease, concerning many things. He knew all of that. He did not need to ask the Father what to do on the earth. He knew how the Father was reigning and ruling in heaven. Because of that, He could bring the same rule and the same reign in heaven. He would, walk, he would walk on the earth just as a father walks in the heaven. Do you understand that? Wow. The government was upon his shoulder as a son of God. As a son. And as a son, it could be given to the world. Last time we saw a scripture in the book of Luke chapter number 10 verses. 22 says, All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father. And who the Father is except the Son. And the one to whom the Son wills to reveal Him. You see, so as a Son of God, all things were delivered to Him by the Father. If all things were delivered and given to him, why should he go and ask the Father for money? Because the Father had already delivered everything to him, and the Father had given him the keys to the kingdom, access to his empire, his kingdom. He could access there any time of the day, and whatever the Son will bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever the Son will lose on earth will be loose in heaven. Whatever decrees and declarations the Son would make, it will be done on the earth even as it is in heaven. Just as the Father is a ruler, an emperor. When Jesus got to the place of a son, guess what? He was also, he became perfected and the image of the Father was perfected in him. He also was walking on the earth as an emperor, as a ruler. And he was ruling like the Father. Ruling over things on the earth like the Father would do. Taking care of affairs like the Father would do. And bringing the uh, increase of the government. Extending the government of heaven on the earth. Making the earth a, the, the colony of heaven. Bringing the government of heaven on the earth. Bringing the kingdom of heaven on the earth. This is why wherever Jesus Christ went, he says, repent, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He was preaching the kingdom. Why? Because it was the kingdom that was given to him. The government that was given to him to bring increase. So he had to bring an increase of the government on the earth. This is why he was preaching the government of the Father. And he taught his disciples to Pray that the government of God will be, will be on the earth. And that the will of God will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Oh, thank you, precious Lord Jesus. 
Now at that place, you don't cry to him for money. You don't cry to him for healing. Because you understand that things have been delivered to you. You understand that you have become a joint heir together with Christ. And you've grown to a place of sonship. So the Lord Jesus can entrust things into your hands. The things the Father entrusted to his hands while he was on the earth. He can also entrust much power into your hands. Because you are being made perfect in love. And your character is being transformed into that, the image of a son. And the Son can entrust you with all things. Oh, praise God forevermore. Thank you, precious Lord Jesus. Oh, yes. Let us see something very quick in the book of Matthew chapter number 16. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Matthew chapter number 16. Are you there? Matthew 16, we are reading from verses 16 downwards, Lord Jesus. So from verses 16 downwards, it says, Simon, well, let us read 15. It says, he said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, fled for flesh and blood, has not revealed this to you but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Okay? Verse 19. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Do you see that? That verse could be interpreted, uh, could be translated, and I will give you the keys of the government, the keys of the empire. So I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. How could Jesus give the keys of the kingdom of the empire of heaven to Peter? It was because the father had given it to him as a son. This is why when Peter understood and had the revelation of Jesus being the Christ, the son, not the prophet, not the apostle, not the rabbi, but the revelation of Jesus Christ as Christ, the son of the living God. That is when Jesus Christ spoke out of his mouth and he said i will give you the keys of the kingdom and jesus revealed and made him understand that it is upon the revelation of a son or as a son of god that the church will be built so which means that the church is destined to come to the place as sons of the living god and when we understand that revelation and we're getting to that place as sons of God, the gates of Hades will not prevail. But if we're just operating and functioning as babies, as children, and just as pastors and not as sons, then the gates of Hades will prevail. This is why we are seeing many sick people in the churches. This is why we are seeing many uh, diseased people, people dying in the churches out of sickness, just many poor people in the churches. The gates of Hades are prevailing. Many people gossiping in churches. Backbiting. In churches. Why? Because when they get the revelation, when the ministers are teaching them about the identity of Jesus as a son, not just as a savior, not just as a teacher, not just as a healer, not just as a provider, but as a son. And they are getting that, they are understanding that Christ in them is the hope of glory. And the Christ in them has to be formed and get to the place of a son. That their spirit must get to the place of sonship. And when their spirit is forming of a Christ, which is their spirit in them, being formed to the place of sonship, the gates of Hades shall never prevail against them. Poverty, sickness, diseases, fear, anxiety, oppression shall never prevail against them. Never will it prevail against them. And as we are maturing as sons, Jesus, verse 19, he told Peter, and I will give you. He didn't say, I give you. He said, I will give you. He could only give it to Peter after Peter was born again and received the Holy Ghost. So they were trained, the disciples, without them receiving the Holy Spirit, without them being born again, they were trained to become sons. This is why Jesus was very rigid and strict. With the disciples because he did not just want them to function as apostles but he wanted them to function as sons of god this is why peter was expected to walk on the water and when he sang jesus said why did you doubt so sons of god 
You see, it wasn't just the gift of the Spirit. If you have the gift of healing, and you can't walk on water. This is a son of God that walks on water. So Jesus was training them to get to the place where they can do the same things he does and even greater. So as, as, as apostles, he trained them to become like sons. But he could not yet give them the keys. So when Peter was born again to them that believe on his name, he gave them power to become sons of God. When Peter was born again, so after he was born again, that's when he gave him the keys. After he had received the Holy Spirit, he gave him the keys. Where now he have the keys of the kingdom. And whatever he binds on the earth could be bound in heaven. Whatever he loses on the earth will be loose in heaven. So we'll pick up from here, from here next program. We'll understand that when we are mature into that place, where the Father's character is being de developed in us, where we are being made perfect in love, and the Father is taking us through the process of the training as sons, now he will give us the governmental powers. He will give us the keys of the kingdom and we will be able to make decrees. We'll become the kingdom of God on the earth. This means that we'll be making decrees. We'll be setting laws on the earth. And whatever we speak, we decree on the earth, it shall be done. Heaven will back us up. You, we become the government of heaven on the earth and we start to increase or we start to uh, extend the government of God on the earth and wherever we go will bring the increase of the government where there shall be no end. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, if you have any sickness or disease or any illness, whatever you're going through, if you're having bad dreams, uh, you're finding yourself sleeping with people in dreams or you're having headaches, whatever it is you're going through. Uh, if, if it's bad dreams, whatever, lay your hands on your head. Uh, sickness in your body, uh, just put your hand there. Whatever it is, I'm going to speak into your life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you receive wholeness by faith. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name that your kingdom has come. Thank you, Lord. I give an example that when... Uh, your parents gave birth to you initially you were a little baby okay they used to call you their baby your baby and then eventually you grew up to the place where they will call you their child and then after you came to the place where they would call you their son or their daughter so you have been brought to the place of a son or a daughter you're now a mature person you're an adult okay and you're not just a son because of your physical age but because of the way you process things in your mind because of how you reason because of how responsible you are because of, of your character that has been developed because now you're able to take care of responsibilities take care of the business your father or mother are able to take care of. So when they are not there, you're able to be in charge. If let's say your mother is not there, you can take care of your siblings. If your mother and father are not there, you can take care of the business. If your dad was to travel, travel he can entrust you with his car and the car keys. If let's say your mother has a store or your dad has a business, he can send you into another province or city and tell you to start the same business there. Why? Because you've been trained to know the ways of your father or mother. And now you understand how to also uh, go about his business. And you can start another business in a different place. Praise God. Hallelujah. This is why sometimes um, some managers or super, uh, bosses of some companies... They will send one of the employees, okay, to another place to start another business, a store that is similar to the store where they're not even able to articulate in the English language or whatever the native language is. See, so when you are born anew or when someone is born anew, they drink milk and they cannot uh, tell mommy or daddy, mommy, I need food. Mommy, I, I want this or I want that. They just cry. So the parents detect uh, their needs. Okay, the parents know their needs. 
And now, one thing you have to understand, God wants us to come or get out of the place where we are always crying out to Him to do things for us. God doesn't want you to cry to Him. There are many believers that cry to God. Whenever they are going through difficulties, they are going through hardships, whenever they are, they are in need of something, they will just cry to God. Oh, oh God, why am I going through that? How come it is me? Oh, God, why am I facing all these trials? What have I done? Why me? Oh, God, you see that? You see, so that's not what God wants. God doesn't want you to keep crying. That is a, a cry baby. Now, many believers are cry babies. Unfortunately, many are babies. They keep crying every single time to God. But your father doesn't want you to keep crying to him. But when you're a baby, he understands that you're a baby. And he understands why you're crying to him. So the offense he will give to you as a baby. You understand that? He will give you things as a baby. Though you might not know the words to use. You might not know the right ways to pray. You might not know the right words to use to make declarations and to make decrees. You might not know what to bind on earth for it to be bound in heaven. You might not know what to lose on earth for it to be loosed in heaven. So you're crying out to God for God to come and heal you. You always call a man and woman of God for them to come and lay hands on you. God understands when you're a baby. They used to be. But before the boss can send the employee there, it is because they've been trained, they've understood the ways of, of that business, and they know the ways of the boss. The boss um, trusts them and can trust them with uh, his resources and knows that this person is trustworthy and has come to the place of understanding, the place of knowledge where they can carry out responsibility. See, they are faithful, they are committed, they are devoted. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So that is what we're talking about being placed or coming to the place of a son of God. This is what the Bible says that we are predestined to the placing or to the placement as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the pleasure of his will, to the praise of his of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. Now this teaching that is coming to you, you might ask yourself, what is the relevance of it? right now to my life because uh, right now I need a husband I need a wife or right now I need healing I need deliverance right now I need money I need a direction concerning uh, my school I need to know where to go what to do you might be asking yourself these kind of questions maybe you're praying for certain things you have not received them and you're asking yourself what is the relevance why, why should I know uh, this well uh, because that there is a place where you can pray to God for God to give you things, okay? That is the baby. That is what I was talking about, the baby stage, the child stage, and also to the place where you are an adult, you're grown up, you're a son, your daughter, God can call you a son. He no longer sees you as a baby. See, so it is a baby that will always depend on the parents to feed them. To feed them. A baby always... When a baby is hungry, okay, the baby that cannot go and get food for themselves. They cry. They are not even... They're... But after many years of being a Christian, you see, he expects you to grow up from that stage. And certain things you've been crying for, you wouldn't get them anymore. Even if you cry all your life. This is why there are many believers that remain sick and they die sick. Many believers remain broke and they die broke. Many believers are oppressed and they die oppressed. You, you go to heaven all right, but you will not have liberty on the earth. Hallelujah. So this is why a lot of times even after uh, laying hands on people and they get healed and they get delivered and whatever their needs are, they receive it. After a while, the enemy will come back and if they are not filled with the word of God, they have not understood how to walk in freedom they've not understood how to walk in liberty they've not understood how to grow up the devil comes back again and their condition is worse than the previous condition this is what is happening to many believers many christians and they don't understand what is going on with them you see so we are not trying to bring you the fruits of things see so this program is designed and destined to bring you to a place 
where you now grow up and you know how to take your business and you're getting to the place of sonship, the place where God always destined for us to be. The Bible says in the verses 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us acceptable and the beloved. You see, and so when, when we are walking as sons, God is receiving praises. He's being glorified. That's what, that's what the fullness of his grace was given to us for. Not for us to just be church members. Not for us just to be uh, church goers. See that? So it is the Father's good pleasure and his good will for you to get to a place where you are a son just like a little Hallelujah. For the past weeks, we've been talking about the placement of sons of God. The placement of sons of God. As being placed or as coming to the place where God sees us as his sons or calls us his sons. Now let us go very quick to the book of Ephesians chapter number 1 verses number three pick up from where we left last time i want you to pay very i want you to pay attention and listen to what is coming to you very carefully and this is what is going to change your life and open your mind to know how to live your life how to live the way god had always wanted you to live before you came on this earth praise god Ephesians chapter number 1, verses number 3. It says, Blessed is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing and heavenly in Christ, just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to to the good pleasure of his will. Verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us acceptable in the beloved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, what we understood from last time was that the word used here, adoption, okay, where it says having predestined us to adoption as sons, okay, the word in Greek has to do with the placing as a son or someone coming to the place as a son.